Okay, artists, let's do this. Today, we're going to talk about composition. Now, composition is when you take all the pieces, put them together, and make a painting. We're going to see how Henry puts together his composition, and we're going to lose, learn some of the tricks that Henry uses in order to make his compositions interesting. Remember earlier on, I told you that having talent was a nice thing, but having talent does not make you an artist. Remember, you have one most important art tool. Boy, Henry had that more than anything else, imagination. But in addition to imagination, it's nice to know the tricks. Artists are tricksters, magicians. They're not just talented. They have a lot of other things going for them. And today, I'm gonna to teach you some tricks, some tricks of composition. Let's look at some of Henry's monkeys. This is called the Merry Gestures, Jesters. And what you see in this picture are a group of monkeys. And they're sitting mostly in the grass at the bottom of the composition, right in the front. But whoa, when you look at these monkeys carefully, you are going to notice something outrageous. There is a bottle just hanging in the air pouring out what looks like milk. And over here, there is an arrow that has shot into the grass. Now here, this monkey, he has his mouth open and he looks a little bit angry. And look at his arm. His arm appears to be holding back the other monkeys. Look out, an arrow. Is that why the milk is just in the air? The merry jesters, are they just goofing around? Who knows? It was Henry's imaginary story. Now, I want you to look at this picture and notice how full it is. And please, my artists, notice that Henry has made every one of his plants leaf by leaf by leaf. That is one of the things that makes this such an incredible painting. But why is it that we keep looking at it? Henry has used tricks. And the first trick I want to teach you is this. Well, actually, I don't have to teach you this because I think all artists know this instinctively. You never put anything right in the middle of the page. Nothing important is right here in this spot in the middle. There are some beautiful grasses, but we don't have animals. We don't have birds. We don't have flowers. We don't have monkeys. Nothing of importance is right here. We have a monkey right here, but he's not in the middle. Never put anything in the middle of the page. It makes your picture boring. But you know why? I'll tell you why. It has to do with your brain and the way your brain sees things. When you put something right in the middle of the page, what happens is that your brain says, exactly where it should be. Let's look at something else. Your brain wants you to be neat. Your brain wants you to be organized. Your brain wants you to clean your bedroom. But when you're an artist, you don't want somebody saying, oh look, everything where it should be. Let's look at something else. You want people looking at your picture. So you have to trick them. And one of the ways you trick them is by not putting something in the middle. And when you don't have anything right in the middle of the page, brain says, eyes, look at that again. And when you look at it again, then you start to notice some amazing things. Here's the next trick in composition. And it is by far my favorite. It is called the magic triangle. See this bird? See these monkeys? See that flower? Your eye travels 
right across the composition in the shape of a triangle. Class, whenever you put a triangle in the middle of your picture, your viewer looks at it longer. You trap your viewer into looking at the picture. All right. Um, <laughs> we're going to talk about this this time, next time. But I want you to notice the beautiful color. Mm -mm -mm. Let's look at another one. Henry didn't just make paintings. He made stories. He made stories in his imagination. And sometimes he wanted to tell you those stories in the title. Now, the next picture is commonly referred to as the hungry lion. But I want to read you Henry's entire title for this painting. It's unbelievable. The hungry lion leaps upon the antelope, devours it. The panther anxiously awaits the moment when she too can have her share. Birds of prey have each torn out a piece of flesh from the poor creature, emitting a cry. Sunset. <laughs> Isn't that great? Let me show you the picture. It's a big one. Look at this. Now you have to look carefully because has got his animals camouflage. It's easy to see the lion and you can see the antelope and you can see that they're near the middle but they are not in the middle of the composition. Now when you look very carefully suddenly you see the jaguar. There she is hiding in the trees totally camouflaged waiting for her turn to eat part of the antelope. Then if you look over here on the other side of the picture, you will see one of his birds of prey. Where did he go? There he is, right there. See that bird of prey? And notice what that bird has in its beak. A piece of flesh that he has torn right from the side of the antelope. While the lion was attacking it. Now here again, I want you to notice the magic triangle. You go, once you find him, from the bird of prey down to the lion and the antelope and back up, once you can find him again, to the jaguar hiding in the trees. You have a magic triangle there. Oh, remember part of his title was sunset. Do you see the sun setting in the background? Henry loved putting in the setting sun. He also loved the full moon. You'll see those elements in his pictures all the time. Now, check out all the greens. Oh my gosh. Isn't that beautiful? I want to show you another one. Henry didn't necessarily mean to be funny in his paintings, but some of his paintings are very, very funny to look at. This is one of my favorite, and it's called The Flamingos. But the first thing you're gonna notice about this painting is that these birds that he has painted right here in the front of the painting are not flamingos at all. Oh yeah, they're pink, but they're pink cranes. Flamingos, remember, have a wonderful, let's see if I can find you a picture, there you go. Look at that beak, look at that beak. Remember, when they put their heads in the water, they turn their heads upside down and they go num, 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 and eat the shrimp out of the water. These guys have straight beaks. He was actually looking at pictures of cranes. Here's a crane from his Book of Wild Beasts. He was looking at these pictures of cranes when he was trying to make his flamingos. Now, one of the things I love about this picture is another thing that you can do. I'm not sure that Henry did this intentionally, but one of the reasons I look at this picture over and over and over again is because he surprises me. Now, sometimes when you make a surprise in your picture, you're not even doing it intentionally. But here, I want you to see these natives that are back here on this island back or a peninsula off in the middle part of the picture. And I want you to observe something very interesting and why they surprise me so much. Do you see the size of these flowers? Do you see that one of those people could actually get into that flower and 
floated around like a boat? Do you see that those people are so small that if they walked up to one of these flamingos, they probably wouldn't be much bigger than the flamingos you're looking at? He surprised me because his perspective is not correct. He's trying to show us that the people are farther away from us than the birds, but he made them way too small, especially since he put those flowers out there in the lagoon and they are humongous. Of course, we know Henry doesn't really care about that, does he? He doesn't care at all. He's using his imagination. One more, and this one is also funny. And I don't think he meant to be funny on purpose. <laughs> but it's one of the charms, one of the things that makes his art so special and so childlike and so naive. Remember, that is the title they gave his art, Naive. This is called the Port of Algiers. And Algiers is a port, meaning it's next to the ocean, in Africa, in the country of Algeria. Um, and I want you to check out this camel. Now, before I show you the camel, I want to talk to you about camels for a second. You know, there's two kinds of camels. There's the one bump camel and the two bump camel. It's easy to remember which is which because the one bump camel is called the dromedary. And if you make the letter D laying on its side, kind of like that, you have one bump. Now, the two bump camel is called a Bactrian camel. He's got two bumps. And that's kind of easy to remember because if you leave leading the B on its backside, the B part is two bumps. So a Bactrian camel has two bumps on his back and a dromedary camel has one. Here's Henry's camel. Ready? Okay, check out that camel. Do you notice where the bump, the second bump is? He wanted to make a Bactrian camel class, but he had never seen a Bactrian camel. He had read that they had two bumps, but he literally did not know where the second bump was. In his painting, the second bump looks like a giant mosquito bit him and made a bump on his backside. Here is the first bump, here is the second bump, but class, that's not what a back tree and camel really looks like, and yet, Look at this painting. It is beautiful. He surprised me with his camel. He has a beautiful composition here with nothing in the middle. Although I don't really see a magic triangle, you could say the triangle goes from here to here to here because you've got white robes, white clouds, white robes. That might be pushing it a little bit, but it makes a nice balance in the composition. All right. There are many things to make you can do to make your uh, composition interesting. The first, which I don't even have to talk to children about, is the idea of not putting anything right in the middle of the page. It's too organized. The brain gets bored looking at it, and we don't want people turning away from our art. We want them looking at it. The magic triangle is my favorite tool in making a strong composition, but don't forget the element of surprise. It's always fun to be surprised in a painting. All right, see my paper? It's our turn to draw. Today, we're going to draw our jungle. But before we begin our, begin our jungle, I want you to make a format. That's our talk. When I ask you to format your paper, I am asking you to put a picture frame around it. And when you put a picture frame around your picture, what happens is that you frame it. Well, I just said that. <laughs> when you frame your picture, it looks finished. Isn't that fun? So you can do that just by putting a format around the edge of your paper. It makes your picture look more finished, all right? now. Today I am drawing with a crayon. 
for a reason because I may want to use some watercolors in here. Uh-oh, don't panic. Are you telling me you don't have any watercolors? Don't worry about it. Markers work just as well. Um, but do you have to just use markers or watercolors? Can you use crayons to make the color in your picture next time? How about making it with collage? There are many things you can do, but if I draw with a crayon, what I set up is a resist. Now the same thing happens if you're lucky enough to have a, uh, an oil pastel handy. You can draw with the oil pastel and you will set up a resist. You may use any color you want, but if you are drawing with an oil pastel, please do not draw with the black. The black is extra oily and you'll get prints all over your picture before you even get to start color. All right, here we go. I've got my format and now we're gonna think about our jungle and how we want our jungle to look. Now, the first thing I would like to put in the front, thinking of those merry jester monkeys, is some grasses. So I am going to put some big grasses in the front of my picture. You can put whatever you want in the front of your picture. Notice, I am starting with the front of the page, not the back. When you draw, you want to start with the areas that are closest to you. That way, if you decide to add things that overlap, you won't run into crossing lines, okay? Trust me on this one, all right? So, now I've got my grasses in there. And um, don't forget that I wanted to talk about Sir Hiss and the ridiculous um, zebra in the middle of the jungle, which of course you would never find. I don't want to put anything right in the middle of my composition, so I'm going to start by putting a tree right here. And this tree is going to be for Sir Hiss to uh, hang from. Okay, there's my tree trunk anyway, and I'm going to wrap Sir Hiss. Whoa, he's a big guy. Here he is. These are his coils, and they're wrapping around the tree. Now, you can see what I talked about when I was talking about overlapping lines, because I'm going to have his tail coming out here, and suddenly I have an overlapping line. Am I going to be worried about that overlapping line? Oh, no. Imagination. We'll take care of that. All right, now here comes Hiss's head from around the back of the tree. He's gonna be looking down here. Oh yes, he's got his mouth open, big mouth. And he is looking down. He's gonna be smelling. Remember the snakes smell with their tongues. He's gonna be smelling my uh, zebra, who is, whoa, going to be terrified. Okay, now, he needs an eye so he knows where he's looking. Okay, and they do have nostrils, but that's not their primary way of smelling. Um, they're more for just breathing. Now, remember I said here we have a problem because I have overlapping lines. Because his coils are going to go around the tree, right? They're not going to be flat against the tree. But I'm not worried about that because my snake is going to have a pattern. And I will just use these lines to become a part of my snake pattern. Whoa, check that out. Now, can you tell, can you tell that I had a problem with overlapping lines? Imagination. Whoops. There's no mistakes in art. Don't ever forget that. There's no mistakes in art. There's only opportunities. All right, so now I have the opportunity to make some very interesting patterns. All right, here's my snake. Here he is, my Sir Hiss. He really has diamond patterns, not uh, zigzags, but does that matter? Of course not. Okay, so the next thing I wanna put in, before I put in anything else so I don't have any more overlapping problems, I'm gonna put in my zebra. My zebra is going to be looking terrified. Whoa, whoa, he's way down here in the grass and he's going, oh no, it's a snake. His ears are back, 
Oh, oh, he's got his hair on his head. He's going to be rearing up. Here's his legs. No, no, Mr. Snake, don't catch me. Okay, remember what else I told you. All this fighting that's going on in the jungle isn't because Henry's a mean person. Remember, Henry's a hungry person, and he's thinking about food. The snake needs to eat, and today he's decided he wants to have a zebra burger. Hmm. I don't know if he'll be successful or not, but here we go. Here's the other leg. My zebra burger looks a little funny. Is that okay? Of course it is. How did I do this? Okay, here's my grass. Here's my zebra. His back's going to come back this way. He's a funny looking zebra, all right. And we're going to have his tail. Zebra's tails are kind of like donkey tails. They just have a little poof of hair at the end. Okay, he's got big eyes because he can't believe what he sees. Oh, no. Oh, we better make a not so happy mouth. All right, here we go. Here's my zebra, and zebras have stripes. For now, I'm just gonna put his stripes on like this. I might do more when I go to color him later. Stripe, 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 stripe. This jungle's gonna start getting very confusing. The more confused your jungle looks, the more you'll have in it, the more beautiful your jungle will be done when it's done. <laughs> the more beautiful your jungle will be when it's done. There you go. All right, you got that? Now, behind my grass and my tree, I think I'm going to put some flowers. Do my flowers have to be regular flower size? Of course not. They can be giganticus if I want them to be. These are my flowers. This is my imagination. I can fill my page any way I want. I think I'm gonna create some balance in my picture. Balance is another part of composition. And I'm going to add another flower over here behind his, so that we have a balance of flowers across the page. Now I'm having to do behind. Did everybody see the trick I used to make behind? Whenever you want to show something behind, here's what you do. You start the line, but as soon as that line touches another line, ah, you have to pick up your crayon. Then you go to the other side of that shape and you finish the line. It stops as soon as it hits something else, okay? Let's do this again. Um, I'm gonna put some tall skinny grasses in behind my zebra, but I want them to be behind my zebra. So when I do that, I am going to stop my line as soon as it hits the zebra. Stop my line. Stop my line. Stop my line. All right. There we go. I like those. I'm gonna put some more in. But I gotta go slowly because I have to break my line every time it hits another line. And that way, when I'm done, it will all look behind. Whoa, my picture's starting to get a little confusing. That's a good thing. Notice, class, that today I'm not coloring in anything. You don't want to color in anything today. Today we're making like a color book page. It's just going to be a series of lines and then the next time we get together we are going to create our color and we're going to talk about how color works. All right. Um, I need, oh, I need an orange tree in my picture. Remember Henry loved orange trees. I think he loved oranges. These are um, the branches. I'm doing my branches in my tree. 
and of course I have to stop my tree because it's behind my flower and it's behind my tall grasses. Now, I have to put on the leaves. Oh, this is where the Henry Rousseau paintings get to be hard work because you have to do it, class, leaf by leaf by leaf. No lollipop trees, all right? Do your leaves have to look exactly right? Of course not, we're using our imagination. Here's some more leaves coming over here. I think I'll have another branch right here with some more leaves on it. Got another branch here. Got more leaves on this branch. Okay. And then I have to have some oranges. Notice, class, I'm trying to make things big. You want your shapes to be large because you're going to have to paint each one of these shapes in. So, uh -oh, let's see, here's my leaf. I'm gonna have some oranges falling. Whoops, that orange is behind my flower. Falling down. Whoops, that orange is touching my leaf into my grasses. That orange is behind my grass. All right, now I think I'll go ahead and finish my grasses across the page here. But I've got to be careful because I have to break my line every time my line comes to another line. And that's how I get behind. Whoa, we look at that. Isn't that starting to look so confused? I love it. Okay, I think I'm gonna carry my tall grasses. I really like the way these look. So I'm gonna carry these tall grasses clear across my picture. Be very careful because I don't want to get my grasses into circus or into my zebra. Gotta be a thinking artist because boy, I'll tell you, it doesn't take long to make a mistake. Okay. All right, now I'm just about finished with my tall grasses in the background, but I still have plenty of room in my picture to put more things. Here, I think I'm gonna make a big maple leaf. I don't even think I'm gonna make the tree, but I think I'm gonna put a big maple leaf right in here behind, so I have to break my line when I, let's see. Oh, we can't have a jungle if we don't have a Venus flytrap or a pitcher plant. I'm gonna make a pitcher plant. Hmm, where am I gonna put it? I don't wanna put anything right here in the middle because I wanna put a big circle here. And this circle is either going to be the sun or the moon. I'm not gonna decide which it's gonna be until I actually paint my picture. But right now, let's see, where can I get my pitcher plant? I think I could squeeze a pitcher plant in, oh, right here. Okay, behind Sir Hiss, coming up here. He's coming up here like this. Uh-oh, now it's gonna look like my pitcher plant is trying to eat my moon. Look at that, you can't even put the hood of the pitcher plant into the picture because I ran out of space. Things are so big. Maybe I'll put another pitcher plant right here that won't be quite so big. There's his hood and there's his... I caught a pitcher plant eating a bee the other day. It was a... Uh, um, put a little more hood on it. It was a yellow jacket, and I could hear it bzz, 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 inside the uh, pitcher plant. It was kind of funny. Well, I guess it wasn't funny for the yellow jacket, but everybody has to eat. We have to remember in nature, that's what happens. Everybody's eating everybody else. <laughs> I ate some tomatoes from my garden yesterday. They were delicious. Okay, my picture's getting pretty full, but I still have room for some bamboo. 
I'm going to put some bamboo in behind here, going behind my orange tree, behind my grass. Where'd it go? <laughs> I'm losing it. Okay, and they have long skinny leaves. All right. Oh boy, my jungle is getting very full. And this is what you want your jungle to be. Now today, I really recommend you use a white piece of paper. Um, if you, well, you should be able to find a white piece of paper. I suppose you could use a piece of newspaper, but that, you know, and it's going to have marks on it and that's just fine. But if you don't have white paper, you might try using a piece of newspaper. I wouldn't use brown paper today simply because, uh, you're going to want to get your color nice and clean. So you don't want the color to be affected. So, um, try using uh if you can get hold of a piece of white paper that's the best but if you don't have any white paper that doesn't mean you can't make art that just means you've got to use your imagination and uh try a piece of newspaper you'll have to be careful with it in fact i would probably glue a couple of pieces of newspaper together if i was going to use newspaper and it doesn't matter that it has little patterns in it the patterns will make it more interesting okay maybe one more I think I'm going to put another maple leaf in here. Heaven knows what the maple leaves are attached to because we can't see where those leaves are going in the jungle. There's so much going on. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. I went through my grass. Oh, heavens. Remember, there's no mistakes in art. There are only opportunities. So if I went through my grass right there, that's not the end. I can just put a pattern in my grass, can't I? Yes, I'll make it even more confusing to look at. Um, let's see, I have oranges over here. I think I'm going to put just a tiny bit of an orange tree over here. Balance. We want our composition to be balanced. So here are some oranges. Maybe um, they'll be hanging. I'm going to put them on hangings. And here's part of the tree here, if I can remember that. Um, all right. Now, that will give me orange, orange, hiss, um, zebra. And I think I will be able to create... The magic triangle with my color and my shapes. All right, I think I finished my picture. How about you? Next time, we're going to talk about color. See you then.